My name is Cassie Summers. Welcome to the Curious Universe podcast. I'm going to introduce you to a phenomenal woman, a really good friend of mine, Julio Perkins. Thank you for coming to the show. Thank you for having me, Cassie. Always great to play. <laughs> yeah, I love playing with you. Um, and I love where we go in conversations. <laughs> it always seems to, we kind of have this way of bouncing off each other and exploring new universes. Um, and today I was hoping we could really explore the earth, yes. embodiment, bodies, um, and kind of, what's available now what's available yeah. with bodies and with the earth now that maybe has never actually been available before oh wow yeah so have you noticed have you noticed a, even a difference with embodiment your body and the earth over the last um you know six months to a year what have you noticed for you or in the or with those that you work with yeah um What's interesting is that I've been on an exploration with death and dying the last six months to the year, because that's been actually a, a developing piece of my shamanic work and my coaching practice is to have presence with those that are choosing beyond their body. So, you know, I have a very, uh, but I have a belief system that we choose to come in and, and to embody. And they were here in this body, in this vehicle for this lifetime, for however long there, there is. And then we choose beyond our body. And we as an infinite being just keep going. So that's basically my belief system. But this end of life thing, given the way that the world has been showing up lately right so things that have been bringing death to the forefront of people's minds has been made me more aware of how much those points of view about death and dying have been impelled and put onto a body to elicit a scare response or a survival a very primal survival the you know response in the body because that's oh that's not a good thing even though it's been a natural thing for hundreds you know thousands of years <laughs> and a lot of cultures and I know that in my culture in a western culture it, it's not the thing that we talk about so what I see as possible is that there's a real peace with death that death is really a choice and that the whole embodiment is a choice from the very beginning. You choose coming in, you make choices all along the way. <laughs> and then there's the, the choice beyond and maybe another choice to come into another body, you know? So that's kind of the whole broad brush of, of what I see and what I'm aware of. It's being heightened right now. I'm hoping other people are seeing it. It's maybe um, I kind of have that hope that people could come to it other than being a dire situation, <laughs> you know, like war and pandemics and things like that. And it's okay. I should, you know, I need to have my maybe little work done on my hopes. <laughs> 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 but that's. I think that's a good place to to, for, to start looking at it. Did that answer your question? <laughs> yeah, well, that, what a great place to start exploring together is um, the even the concept of peace with yeah. others dying with, with, you know, I think of um, 
books I've read and stuff where it's you come you you are confronted with your own mortality to really actually acknowledge that one day you're you will not want to be in this body anymore <laughs> yes yeah and that that's confronting rather than a gift right like the opportunity to really sit with that like in a very exploratory kind of quest fashion you know yeah so what how have you come to where you are now with with the peace with allowance with um having a lot more ease with death than I would say anyone I know. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think that there's, there's two pieces of it too. The first piece is the earth. Mm. So again, knowing that um, I didn't always have ease with my body, but then just realizing that my body has cycles, just like the earth has cycles, you know, and then it might have um, moods and, and feelings because a body is a sensory organ right organism and it might have those feelings much like the earth would do that so the kind of like winter going into hibernation sort of a death of the plants and the leaves and things like that and then spring coming back forth and rejuvenating and then summer really flourishing and then fall kind of in that decline where leaves are dropping and going back at that the earth has really taught me a lot about like the naturalness of a cycle of life and it really has no judgment about that there's really no opinion or strong point of view about that it will cycle through it will do what it needs to do it will fire up literally maybe in forest fires in the summer heat you know because that's that's what it requires to do in that time or it will get extra cold in, in the winter time for whatever reason that it needs to it just doesn't have to explain itself <laughs> you know what I mean? it's like, it's like i'm i'm fiery right now this is what i require you know so so, you know, my belief is that my body is the extension of the earth. So, but I disconnected it with my brain computer. You know, I just, it's like, so plug me back in to the earth. You know, that's, that's the first teacher, you know? So the second teacher I would say would be everybody who has chosen beyond their body. You know, everybody that I've known who's chosen beyond their body and um, it started as a young girl, just having the awareness of that. So knowing that my grandfather was sick and then having the, the mood in the house change and all of a sudden we were back in Michigan. And of course I could have maybe logically pieced it together, but I wasn't doing any of that logic up here. I was really feeling it in my body, the, the transition of the energy so that I could perceive that his energy was still around, but it was in a different form. And when finally somebody said that aloud, you know, grandpa has died. It was like, oh, thank you for the acknowledgement. Thank you for somebody saying what that was that I was perceiving. And then of course, other grandparents, you know, being in the room at a funeral with the casket there and feeling like my feet on the floor, like electric because there's energy in there. So there's her presence is there. People are talking about her. She's, you know, being acknowledged. She liked that. And it's just like, wow, I feel like, you know, I think my feet, I just had to pick them up every once in a while. Cause it was just so, zzz. I was like, oh, this is energy. There's that. Then, you know, friends along the way, lost my best friend uh, who, at 18. She and I had both signed up for the same scholarship to study abroad and I got it. She didn't, a little tension there, you know, right? Cause she wanted to go too. And finding out that she had a, a cancer diagnosis. So that whole year she was home with her family spending her last year and I came back and she, died shortly thereafter, after my return, you know? So again, just following the energy and not having a point of view about it. I had a little angst about it. I'll confess, you know, <laughs> like, cause I, I beat her out. Right. But, and she wanted to do this, but what a gift that yeah. she was able to be there. So I learned a lot from her 
because when you are in a place where your body is going into the winter, <laughs> okay, and you um, are willing to be aware of things, she would say things that like sounded like my grandma did, like the wisdom of ages for an 18 year old, you know, she would say, oh, honey, you know, <laughs> relationships are tough. And you just need to know who you are in this. And I'm like, is that you? You know, <laughs> like that. But it just kind of opens you to that because she's in tune with her, her body and she's in tune with the cycles of where it's going. And now she has access to all of that. And, you know, and then fast forwarding to my own family, you know that our son chose beyond his body. And so that was a really talk about awareness opening. Yeah. Once doors of awareness open, they're open to you. And as much as you think that you'd like to close them, sometimes you just can't. <laughs> and that's actually the gift. <laughs> so if you can receive it, you can actually access a whole bunch of other things just going through that one doorway, because now there's other spaces available to you. So I would say lots of teachers, earth, and those that have chosen. Hmm. Has that, wow, I just want to take a moment and just acknowledge the beauty in which you you gifted all those energies and possibilities to us thank you you're welcome <laughs> in uh having having all those teachers and all those experiences um and you know we talked in another podcast about uh experiencing cancer and getting through that what would you say what's shown up for you in your body with that? Like what, what has that taught you, I guess? Um, I would say that change is really a catalyst. It's not a bad thing, <laughs> you know, it's a, it's a catalyst for greater and so my body has changed so much throughout all of those experiences. So choices that I've made to do uh, certain chemotherapy radiation during my cancer journey has definitely changed my body. And I have gone to the place of like, oh, I shouldn't have done that, but that's a whole cycle of judgment. So I would say the, the biggest thing is, you know, that change is a catalyst for greater and, um, judgment will put the brakes on all of that catalyzing <laughs> Good, yeah. it will not even you know maybe not even put the brakes on it it will like full stop you know so it's whatever you choose because you know go back to the earth teacher the earth doesn't have any point of view or any judgment about what it's what it's choosing what it requires to evolve and to change for greater Okay. But if I do that, so that's been the biggest lesson I think has taught me, you know, my body's teaching me that it's like, don't judge because I will manifest and create whatever it is that you tell me to. And if you say this is to this or not enough that, then that's what we will create together. <laughs> so be mindful of what it is because somebody's listening and that's your body. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's, that's really cool to look at and dive in a little bit deeper. So, um, yeah, I've talked on the show about, uh, listening to your body, but what I love right now is you're, you're also talking about your body's listening to you yes. and, and our bodies are also listening to the earth as you know, you and I both, we've had many conversations about that. Mm -hmm. Um, so as we invite people to, to notice that, that your body is listening, um, what, what more could you share about that as well as um, your body's listening to the earth? Yeah, so the first thing I said is like, that I notice that clients that I have, and even in myself for many years, we're underutilizing one of the greatest members of our create team. And that's our body, you know, <laughs> yes. like we don't even invite them to the meetings. It's like the memo goes out and nobody thinks to invite 
your body to the create meeting, you know? So number one, enlist your body and invite your body <laughs> to the meeting. They are part of, you are the CEO, you're the chief energy officer of your life and your body needs to be on one of the primary members of your board. That's just my personal personal point of view, you know? I just love how you're describing this. This is so good. Okay. Yeah, it's like, wait a minute, you know, the door closes there. It should be in the boardroom. They should have a key to the, you know, executive washroom. Yeah. <laughs> right there. That's the, that's the number one thing. Okay. So, um, the, ne the next thing I would is, is this, like, you need to ask your body for what its strength is. So like all of these, you know, you've got these team members now and your body can actually help you do things. So it's, it gets information through the senses and it can transmit that to you, that it's from its consciousness, from its wisdom, you know, it can do that. So ask it for help. So one of my favorite examples is that I always used to get really angry when people would cut me off driving. Like I would get so pissed off, you know, and I'd be swearing. And then my young children would be learning how to swear because they're in the back seat and I'm swearing, you know, <laughs> and it's like, and I would just get so flustered and I would just chew on this for days. You know, I'd be like, tell everybody I see, did you know that that guy caught me off in the road? I had my children in the car, you know, and it was just on and on and I could never get rid of that. So I said, all right, what can I do differently here? So I said, I'm gonna ask my body to clearly show me because it was so instant that I was all, all, all of a sudden in this rage and I couldn't get out of it. Mm -hmm. So body show me when I'm starting that slide into that slippery slope of like heated anger. So it's kind of like black ice when you're driving and all of a sudden you hit it and all of a sudden you're flipped around in the ditch and you're like, what happened? It's like, body, I wanna know when I'm starting to slide so that I can course correct, you know, and not end up spinning out and in the ditch, all right? I want you to show me clearly when I'm starting to go into anger. Well, about a week later, I was driving, somebody cut me off and I started to go into this rage again and my heart rate flashed up. I could see the pulse beat in my eyes. I knew what the expression seeing red was. And I thought, am I having a heart attack? I'm like, and I was, you know, blinker, changing lanes, pulling off onto the side of the road because I wasn't sure it was happening. And then I realized body was showing me clearly when I was sliding into this rage. And I was like, thank you so much. I got it. Thanks body. And it never happened again. Wow. So invite to the table, use it, ask it to do something for you. Those would be my, my two things and let it go plug back into nature. So that's the earth part. Like don't deny it that, that refueling, mm. you know, whatever it is. So I've had times where I've just gone out and laid in the grass, you know, and because everybody who knows me knows that I do wacky stuff like that, <laughs> you know, but I have been in parks where I've been laying there for a long time and had people come over and say, Are you okay? I'm like, yeah, I'm just chilling out like okay this <laughs> yeah because I might be laying there like <laughs> like sprawled out in a maybe not natural way you know <laughs> but that's what my body loves you know as much contact with the earth you know and just enjoying all of that <laughs> oh I love it and I have so many awesome visuals now too <laughs> yeah, I know. so you you actually I had a you answered part of this, but I'm wondering if there's a little bit more. Um, when you when you look at the combination of your body and the earth and bodies, all bodies and the earth, what what is that possibility? What is that? And, and even more now than ever, what is that possibility when bodies get together with the earth and are actually truly willing to open up to receiving? Yeah. Well, I think the, the first thing that comes to mind is that um, areas of unconsciousness, the, so there's, I'm gonna make a distinction here between the land 
Mm. you know, that, that our bodies tread upon and then the earth. Okay. So the land being kind of like the top layer and there's been stuff on the land that we humans have perpetrated for years. So we overuse it or we misuse it, or we have war on it or in the, so all of the energies of that and the energetic imprints of that can still be found in many places across the world. So what's possible that I'm aware of with bodies is that with every single step, as we're treading upon the land, because we are the same composition of that, we can create a change by, you know, actually gifting that and then receiving how the land will change in response to that. It's much like our body, you know, it's listening. (laughs) So I've had the experience of being in places that have been really, um, really devastated by war or bloodshed that I may not have even known about, but just the gift of my presence sitting upon the land and being non-judgmental and happy and acknowledging it can change that. So there's, uh, I lived in Colorado and there's a lot of massacre energy there. So there were, there were wars and fights and massacres that happened and blood was shed there on the actual land without having a point of view about that can be really healing. So there's a lot of people who want to say that that's unfair or that's unkind or don't talk about that because again, the death conversation and quite, you know, again, that part about being maybe sometimes not knowing, but not knowing, I just sort of walk, walk into that, just sort of sit there and, and be with that and know that I can be with that and know that I can change that. That's the other thing that people have to get. They have to know that their bodies have wisdom, consciousness, and they can change things just by being in a space. Whoa. Not know it up here, know Uh, it embodied. Know it really. You said something so cool. You said, and be in the joy. Yeah. I know that we're kind of taught that um, to be respectful of tragedy is to be tragic, is to be in that vibration. Um, Can you talk a little bit more of the gift of what you were just sharing? So to be on land that has experienced bloodshed and such, and to be present, to be without a point of view and to be joyful. Yeah. It almost seems disrespectful, right? Like that's what this, you know, world would say is that you're being disrespectful of what happened here. And actually what I'm, what I would reframe that as, is I'm being natural. (sighs) You know, like I'm being actually what I naturally am, what I innately am, what bodies innately are, what earth innately is. So I'm being natural in that. And be brave because it's not a popular point of view. And the secret to that is don't tell anybody what you're doing. <laughs> That's good advice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they say, what are you doing? So oh, I'm taking my lunch break. <laughs> they don't need to know what you're doing or actually what you're being. They can't understand it anyway. So. Yeah. I, I feel like we can feed things with our energy, you know, yeah. and, and I'm always asking my kids, you know, when, when they're choosing, you know, to maybe be cruel or, or to tease or to whatever, um, that, that's an energy that they're putting out there. Right. And I ask them is, is, do you want more of this in the world? Is this the kind of world you'd like to create? And, and they're like, well, no, I don't want a world of bullying. I'm like, okay, cool. Well, do you get that? that that's what you're feeding. Like you're feeding that into the world. 
And so when I look at these places of the earth and I was, you know, really tapping in as you were, you were talking about the bloodshed and I'm like, wow. So if I were to feed it with, um, more sadness or more of the, those troublesome energies, then am I creating change or am I just feeding more of that being there? Yes. And then when you brought up the energy of that, that joy of the, of the land, yeah. The joy. Then what are you, what are you feeding the land then? Right. Everything that it innately is, you know, right. The joy, the possibilities. Wow. Look at that. <laughs> like who feeding it. And I also, I guess want to add inviting it. Yeah. Yeah. nurturing it too, yes. powering that up. Mm -hmm. That's the possibility with the joy. Joy is like, think of, you know, take a look at this joy, judgment. Mm. Now look at the power hmm. create. And look at the possibilities that get created from each. I, I can, I feel like I can hardly even hold this up. Like I, <laughs> oh my God. I, I just like starts work. getting heavier, and I'm like, oh, <laughs> yeah. Like my arm was up, and I was like, I can't even hold this anymore. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> yeah. Light and heavy possibility. And I think that people have made happiness and joy, like the, the impossible dream and the quest of a lifetime. Wow. Yeah. You know, I just want to be happy and I'm seeking happiness and I will do all these things. And the one thing that always works best for me is just to smile. Because you know, I just smile and you smile. <laughs> that is like a call and response that you can't even plan for, you know, very natural. In nature, they do call and response, right? One mm -hmm. bird says, tweet, 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 and tweet, tweet, tweet. <laughs> you know? They're communing like that. But a smile can do that. That's so beautiful. Um, okay, there's one more thing I wanna I wanna play with a little bit before we have to go. <laughs> uh earth magic so we talked about the the places in the land um you know that yeah that haven't been cared for or have had tragic events on it i would love to hear a little bit about what maybe some of your personal experiences or what you're aware of with those those kind of places of the earth that are still rich with magic that are still that um have have this palpable sense of, of energetic communication and, and, and change. Tell me, tell me all. Oh, really? okay. <laughs> no, um, there's the places that you've been told about, right? They'll say, Oh, here's an energy vortex in this place, you know, and people go and they visit that and they can feel and palpate the energy. Right. So some of that is, is natural. And some of that has been inputted into and fed, right. And can, can be enlarged because of that and almost made touristy, right? And yeah. still a place that you can feel the energy of the earth, right? So um, experiencing weather on the planet is another way to experience power. So how many times have you been in a storm of magnitude or witnessed maybe a volcanic eruption, mm -hmm. not on the TV? Yeah. Wow. you know, live, um, maybe a big tidal wave, something like that with water or a hurricane or a tornado. And I'm not saying go out and be like storm chasers and drive into the middle of a tornado, you know, and be flying around with the cows in the middle, you know, <laughs> like, and you can watch it on TV and experience that too, right? But weather of any kind is a good way to experience power place. Then I would say the third, 
the third way that I've been exploring recently is getting into my roots, my ancestral lines. So the places of power of my ancestors, where they came from, when they where they live closer to the land and off the land and with the cycles of nature. So where did they live? And where did they come from? And so I have ancestry in uh, Northern Europe. And I also have ancestry like in England, uh, some in Ireland. I actually have Eastern European ancestry in Romania. So whenever I see documentaries about the, you know, the deep woods, the deep, dense, dark woods of some of the Eastern European countries, I get, I'm like, oh, it's like, it feels like there's power there. And I'm excited about that. And my body gets all lit up. So I feel you know, I think that people can do their own individual exploration and even visit some of those places. So um, uh, Denmark, where I was an exchange student, is not is only a small part of my ancestry, but that place lit me up like crazy much, you know, so visiting um, burial sites there, visiting rune stones that are, you know, carved upon and still on the land were great. And then uh, the places that, that people have built wonderful cathedrals that were honoring uh, kings and queens and palaces, and then how they use the land for farming and how they use the wind for electricity. There's a lot of um, you know, windmills in Denmark too, because it's a very flat and windy country. So I would say do those three things. Those are yeah. awesome. go to the known places, experience some weather and find your own roots. <laughs> go experience that land, do those things. Those will be fun. That's so such a cool invitation. And, and all those include your body because yeah. you're experiencing them. Yeah. And um, yeah, I wonder, I wonder, you know, as people go beyond this podcast to just really explore that embodiment with the earth um and and all the possibilities that we have right now available yeah so when is the next time that you and i are going to do some of that because you're yeah. talking about that too yeah. like, no i'm going to go to this place now yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, stay tuned listeners we'll let you know when we go on the road yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's so much fun playing with the earth with you, Julie. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you for being on the show. Um, and tune in next week, everyone. Bye for now. Thank you for exploring the curious universe with me. Your curiosity matters. And what if together we could create a greater curious world.